This podcast is brought to you by Knowledge at Wharton. Please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu for more information. The Mac AIDS Fund is the charitable division of Mac Cosmetics. Mac Cosmetics was founded about 15 years ago by two partners, Frank Toskin and Frank Angelo. And when they founded the company, they very much wanted to give back to the community. So they herded all of the original employees into a room, not much bigger than this room, and asked them what they should focus on. And the resounding answer was AIDS. And what's so terrific is that the company has, for 15 years, continued to focus on AIDS, HIV. Well, we see our mission as being what we would call an early adopter uh, in terms of um, getting out in front of issues that perhaps other charities, other foundations, or other corporations would be hesitant to adopt. So for instance, we have funded commercial sex workers, we have funded harm reduction, AIDS and HIV, as you know, preys upon both poverty as well as people's behavior that is often marginalized by society. And so what we do is we try and get in early to high need areas and spark attention through our media and communications work and our spokes models, as well as to infuse cash to very much needed issues. Our money is raised exclusively from the sale of a line of lipsticks and lip glasses called Viva Glam. And what is fortunate for me as the person who runs the foundation is that 100% of the selling price of Viva Glam is given to the foundation. So if you go into a store and you buy a Viva Glam lipstick or lip glass, you pay $14, 17 pounds, and all of that $14 goes to the foundation to give. It's, it's a very generous giving model, 100% giving model. In fact, we're not aware of anybody else that's doing it. Um, it was the founder's belief that that's the way that it should be. The, the other piece that's very interesting is Mac does not advertise except for Viva Glam. And we've had a, a wonderful pantheon of spokesmodels. The original spokesmodel was RuPaul, who, as you know, is a, is a gay uh, man of color who's transgender. Um, and the, the, the uh, uh, ad read, I am a Mac girl. And we've done everything from, you know, Katie Lang to Elton John, Mary J. Blige. And the, the unifying concept really is, uh, and of the company, is that the tent is big enough for all of us. And we want to celebrate in a sort of joyful, sexy, playful way, uh, both ourselves, but that also we want to protect ourselves from HIV. Well, we are fortunate, again, in that the money comes directly from the sale of a product. So as long as people keep buying Viva Glam, then we'll be able to keep giving. I think there's no doubt but that it will be harder times, I think, both for our grantees and for the people that they serve. Um, generally, companies give to worthy causes for a range of reasons. One is that it's the right thing to do. Uh, but there's also very good business reasons to give. Um, you, you'll see increasing data showing that customers are very concerned about the fact that uh, companies are, are good sort of global citizens. Um, and then additionally, as global citizens, we are very interested, as, as many companies are, in creating and sustaining global markets. About um, Over the last couple of years, we've given about $9 million in Africa. We've given about $3 million each year in the Caribbean. And so a healthy, productive world is in the best interest of, of all businesses. Well, there are a range, I think, of leaderships in different countries, actually, some of whom have really embraced HIV and taken it on head on as a, as a public health issue, and other, unfortunately, I think, who've taken on uh, more, more sort of a, a, a negative approach. But what we have done is really follow the lead of our grantees. Uh, we are about to make a very large grant to UNICEF to and in partnership with South African provincial governments, where we are integrating into the childhood immunization programs for two-year-olds HIV tests. So in many instances, we're partnering with governments. And if you need to make a bigger impact in HIV, you need to integrate with government, since the public health system really is a government-owned operation. And, and we don't want to replace government dollars. We want to supplement them. I am an attorney by training. Uh, I was fortunate enough, I attended NYU, and there's a Ruth Tilden Snow program, which is a public interest scholarship. And I was exposed to a range of issues. And when I left law school, I clerked for several years and then decided that I wanted to work with prisoners living with HIV. And so I spent six years working in New York State prisons. 
and then did some research on sex and drug use in the prisons because what I was finding was that we were talking about safer sex, but people were being released to the prison sicker than they were when they were in prison. And then I was lucky enough to get a job with George Soros at his foundation for six years, and then I seemed to stay for six years each time. And then I ran a large nonprofit in New York City, and then Mac was our largest corporate funder, and I was invited to take over this job. So what is interesting to me about my current role is that I have both the corporate, I have, I'm a senior vice president of the brand as well as the head of the foundation. And there's a lot to learn. I think each world has a lot to learn from the other. Well, I think um, being able to translate very clearly the business model that you're working with in terms of social change and foundations, um, as well as the ability to um, think, sort of translate the impact of the work that the foundation is doing to the employees and to the customers, as well as to um, the corporate powers that be. I mean, the bottom line is that companies are in the business of making money. They're responsible to shareholders, and they're responsible to their employees. And so as a foundation, we have to show that all of those dollars are not only making the world a better place, but also making the workplace a better place. We have, for instance, at Mac, the highest employee retention in the entire cosmetic industry. And if you ask our employees why they stay at Mac, one of the top three reasons is always the Mac Aids Fund. As the head of our Portuguese division said to me, I was thanking her for her incredible efforts, and she said, it's one thing to sell lipstick, it's another thing to sell lipstick and make a difference. And um, just to, by way of example, our holiday toy drive, which we've done um, only in our corporate offices for children living in, in the United States with HIV, we decided to expand it this year and put an online clothing drive for orphans in South Africa. And we've had enormous, enormous interest in that program. And, you know, again, in hard economic times, really reaffirming who we are and what we're about. And even though times might be tougher in the United States, there are children all over the world who barely have clothing. And I think that very basic, <clears throat> excuse me, commitment to making the world a better place is is very evident in the company. And if you look at data from customers, there was a recent study on eBay that showed that if a, if a purchaser believed in the cause that a product was benefiting, they would pay up to 8% more for that product. And I, we're seeing that particularly among young people. It is, there, there's one, a large quandary, I think, in the nonprofit world is that our customers essentially the customers of the services, the grantees' clients, don't pay the bill. So for instance, in the for-profit world, if you make a lipstick and you put it in your store and either nobody buys it or they buy it and they bring it back, you know that the product is a failure and you revamp it. If it sells well, you know that it's been a success. What's complicated about our work is we give money to nonprofits that then provide services to customers or, or clients who don't pay the bill. And so the imperative of having a, a feedback loop or outcomes data is much more, I think, in the nonprofit world. The other thing that's tricky is our data compared to the corporate world is, is very old. So for instance, I can sit in a meeting with, with the senior team at Mac and they will know how Mac sold last week at Nordstrom's versus a Mac store in Seattle. And they'll have all the data and they can do an analysis. Whereas I am in making grants, often dealing with public health data that's two years old. I'd say the biggest challenge is also the biggest privilege, which is that there's a finite amount of money, which is about $20 million a year, and there is a seemingly endless amount of need. And so the issue is, is how do you make the biggest difference with, given your company's profile and the, and the, and the synergy with the brand, as well as um, the need, and where do you make the biggest difference? And, I often think of us, I'm a rather short person who loved to play basketball as a, as a young person. I don't know if you know the point guard, Bugsy Malone was a very short point guard. I always feel we are the Bugsy Malone of AIDS funding in that we have to be very quick and very agile and we have to have very good outside shots. And so we focused on issue areas. Um, for instance, we gave um, uh, last year uh, almost $3 million to the Caribbean because for whatever reason it wasn't falling within the priorities of other funders who funded HIV, but there was very high rates. And then what we do, we do a big infusion of cash, we do a lot of media work, and then we try and get other funders to come in given, you know, given the amount of need. 
Uh, it's particularly noticeable when we travel in a group, particularly to charities, because this group shows up, although we're from New I'm from New York. Um, but the philosophy of the company is that everyone should wear the same color. It's a, it, they think it's a show of unity, but also egalitarianism, in that the people at the retail counters wear black, and so we all wear black. It is a great joy to work with students. We have the opportunity at Mac to use student interns and um, thinking out loud with people who are very much, I think, at the beginning of their career or uh, redirecting their career. Um, but also, it is really an extraordinary privilege and joy to make a difference. So for instance, the decision that we've made this holiday season to give clothing to children in an AIDS orphanage that I visited. Um, and and you know, to see the faces of kids um, that, that the company is making a difference with. Um, and also, when you have a program that we first invested in before any other foundation, and that then other foundations are, are, um, are investing in. And then lastly, there really is just enormous, enormous spirit and passion within the MAC ranks. I speak at the international sales meetings. People, you know, have standing ovations. People are so very committed to this. And, you know, when you go into a Mac store, there's literally a thousand things you can buy, sometimes more than a thousand. So it really is the Mac makeup artists that are directing people to Viva Glam and they passionately, passionately believe in, in the cause and in uh, selling the product, which is wonderful. For more information, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu.